Hey guys, it's Maggie. Let me just say that I am so, so incredibly happy to be here, to have a space set up again, and to be talking to you guys. And I have a really exciting topic that we're gonna to touch on today, and that is atheism. And can you be an atheistic witch? I'm not gonna lie, I did use the title to kind of draw you in to see, because really what I'd like to talk about is the differences between um, theism and atheism and how that might affect our magical practices. Let's start off with a little bit of a definition of what these things are because some people may be like, Maggie, what the fuck are you talking about? So theism is basically just a belief in gods or gods. You believe that there is a higher power there and that the higher power is able to Kind of intervene in your life. So once we understand what theism means, we can kind of add any of the root words that go with it, like poly or mono. So polytheistic would be the belief in many gods. Mono would be the belief in one god specifically. Atheism is the lack of belief or the non-belief in gods or gods. God or gods, maybe. Usually, when people say the word atheism. At least for myself, it's kind of a scary word to use because I know that even though I have a lot of atheistic tendencies, I still do believe that there is a source of divine in the world. And that's what I wanted to touch on here is how you can kind of blend these atheistic views with the uh, theistic views. And there is a much more gray area than you probably think a lot of the time. Just to make it a little bit easier, instead of referring to it as atheism for the rest of the video, I'm going to say non-theistic. And I don't know why, but for some reason, I've seen this term used a lot on different blogs and stuff, and it sounds a lot less scary, doesn't it? Non-theistic. So I'm going to do what I usually do and talk about myself, because that is how I relate to things. And I'm going to start off by saying, like I said before, that I have a lot of non-theistic views on when it comes to my practice. So I work a great deal with archetypes and energies of things, and for me, a lot of the time, these are things that I see as projections of myself. So because I see them as a projection of myself and my inner psyche, this would be considered to be non-theistic or atheistic because I'm not putting the belief in a higher power, I'm putting the belief in myself. And I think that by discussing this with some of you, it will make it a lot less confusing whenever you start feeling, you know, those solitary crazies and you're like, is this really happening or am I making up in my head? And that's why it's so important, I think, to understand the difference between um, theistic views and uh, non-theistic views because it can bring a lot more clarity to your own practice if you understand what the fuck you're doing. This topic actually came about whenever I was on a forum for uh, traditional witchcraft and the topic that came up was more or less about reality and what makes something real or validated when you're working your path in the craft. An example of this would be if you are working with your spirit guides. Say you were trying to contact a spirit guide and you're getting you know, information that is coming in, but since you're a beginner, you're having trouble discerning whether or not this information is coming just from your own head or if it is from an external source. Now to me, because I do have a lot of non-theistic views or atheistic views, where the information is coming from is kind of irrelevant to me. A lot of my own practice focuses around self-development and furthering my knowledge of the craft and just a lot of study and reflection. Because I have this view about my own path, that's what makes it okay if I just feel like I'm sitting there talking to myself a little bit. So even if the source of the information is coming from somewhere inside of you, a part of you, it still matters, like it's still important. It still serves as a message that is meant for you at that time. And just because it's not coming from, you know, some ancient spirit from millions of years ago or whatever, it doesn't mean that it's not valid. It is still valid information that you're receiving, especially if it's coming from yourself. We're all our own best teachers, and I think that it's really important that we are able to learn from ourselves in this way. Now at the other end of the spectrum, 
you know, I did say at the beginning of the video, I am theistic, I do believe in a higher power, so when does this come into play for me, basically? So because my beliefs are so fluid and I try not to put a label on them, it makes it a lot easier for me to just kind of dip in and out of what is necessary at the time. The one constant that I have is my belief that the divine lives in everything. And that basically would make me pantheistic. I believe that God is in everything and you know everything that you encounter each day is a part of what makes up the divine. I have almost a deist point of view whenever it comes to the divine. Like I do think it is a living conscious thing that can intervene in our lives, but the way that I relate to this concept is more closely related to fate. I think that things happen for a reason and I think it's because of the gods that are doing this for us. Now you notice I said the gods and that is also really fucking confusing because I wouldn't consider myself a hard polytheist by no means, but I do like to use that term because it makes me feel nice. I think that it's fairly common for a lot of people to work with archetypes when we're first beginning. Yes, I do know that a lot of people, you know, they have a patron deity that they follow or they have certain gods that they worship if they follow a certain um, pantheon. But I also think that the message that working with the archetypes carries kind of has a strong influence in a lot of uh, books at least that you read about in the craft. And I have this really cool quote here from Carl Jung who is amazing and who I relate to a lot whenever it comes to my spiritual path. And the quote, he said that the whole of mythology could be taken as a sort of projection of the collective unconscious. I don't believe that he's invalidating anyone's reality when it comes to their belief in their own divinity. But man as a whole, we could take all of our beliefs and this would reflect in the, cosmi in the cosmic soup of things how the archetypes work together and how they're a part of our lives. This concept is really confusing for me to say out loud, so I can imagine that it's really confusing to understand when somebody's trying to tell it to you. But I hope that you are following along with me in, in some way. What I'm trying to say in the grand scheme of things is that you can absolutely be a non-theistic or atheistic witch and practice your magic and your self-development in a very Jungian, archetypal, non-theistic kind of way, but still hold beliefs in God, basically. You can still have beliefs that there are divine beings that are up there doing, you know, whatever the fuck it is they're doing, but be okay with the fact that you might just be sitting here talking to yourself. Neither is greater than the other, I think. I think there is a place for both views in everybody's world and everybody's mind. I think that it's important to understand that some of the time we may just be reflecting on parts of ourselves when we're dealing with our deities and I also think it's good to have that faith as well in the deities that you're working with to have you know beyond the doubt that those are real because I think that faith is also a really important part of the psyche of the human psyche so I hope you all enjoyed this video I hope it didn't make anybody uncomfortable because I'm certainly not trying to invalidate anyone's practice I am trying to validate everyone and say that we all everyone's right basically I really do wish that you will leave uh, your thoughts and comments below and if you would like to I think I am going to make a blog post about this as well so look for that at my website witchandmoon.com um, also the Etsy store is back up and running and I do want to make a video uh, showcasing some of my pieces, which I do have to work on. But some of you may know I recently moved house again, and that's why I'm kind of back in my, I'm in my new old place again. So that's why it's kind of weird and I've had such a lull and been kind of really up and down with my moods lately. So I'm trying to find that balance within myself and within my space so that I can make some awesome video videos for you guys and I hope you all stay super fucking weird, keep worshipping your own radical divinity and I'll see you next time.